Welcome back. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and today we're gonna take a look at a watch that has thoroughly impressed me. In fact, this may be the best microbrand diver I've seen to date. It's the Atamascus 88 from Wise Watches, a small microbrand based out of Thailand. This is the first watch I've seen from Wise, let alone a watch from Thailand, and perhaps that's one of the reasons I was so impressed with it, as I really wasn't sure what to expect. But I can tell you right now, they know what they're doing. And one of the more interesting or unusual aspects of the 88 is its case, as it isn't made of 316L stainless, the industry standard, but rather they went with an upgraded 904L grade steel, which in the world of watches is almost synonymous with Rolex, as they switched over to 904L steel back in 85, or as they like to call it, oyster steel. These days, a few other brands will occasionally use it, but it's still not overly common and mostly associated with luxury watches. So to see it in a $600 microbrand is a standout feature. We'll touch back on this in a little bit, but before we really get into the details, I need to give you one quick disclaimer, which was that this watch was provided by Wise and they're not asking for it back, hence that promotional tag at the beginning. Now that said, let's talk specs. For this one, it's a 41 millimeter wide watch with a lug to lug that's just shy of 48. So it's a mid-sized diver that should fit most wrists out there. In terms of total thickness, it's fairly thin at 11.7, which is from the exhibition case back with sapphire to the top of the domed sapphire crystal, which you can see here is fairly tall. Without that crystal, it's probably closer to 10 millimeters. So overall, the 88 has a fairly thin profile. It's also fairly lightweight for a 200 meter diver, with a weight of about 75 grams on either of its straps. Then topping everything off, you have a 20 millimeter lug width and a Miyota 9015 movement. As you might expect, on the wrist it's very comfortable. Due to the very sleek case shape, I think it wears and looks smaller than 41, probably more like a 40. In fact, the bezel itself is 40 millimeters. On my seven and a quarter inch wrist, the lug to lug is about ideal and winds up keeping the watch squarely where it needs to. While the lighter weight and thinner profile make this one you can put on and completely forget about, at least until you're ready to show it off because this design is eye-catching. Although before we get into that, let's quickly talk about why 904L steel is important or potentially important here, as I'm sure using it has increased the cost of production. The short version is that it's a higher grade of steel with a slightly different makeup than 316. The main two advantages, and really the reason Rolex decided to go with it, is that compared to 316, it's more corrosion resistant and takes on a higher polish. Now, that's not to say there's anything wrong with 316. It's the industry standard, and it's served many people faithfully over the years. And I think there's an active debate out there on whether 904 is really an upgrade, or perhaps it's just a gimmick. For the most part, I'll let you decide that for yourselves. For myself, I kind of rate this like I do increased magnetic resistance, where it's a nice bonus, and in certain situations, it's great to have. But it's not something I would ever consider to be a must-have, like I'd never restrict myself to just 904L watches, especially because I don't like Mercedes hands. Anyway, moving on to the case, you can clearly see here that Wise took full advantage of that steel to get a higher polish as almost every millimeter of this thing has a mirror finish. Honestly, it's almost ridiculous to look at. I think the only part that's brushed is the case back. Now, personally, I do prefer more of a brushed finish on my watches, and especially on the sides, which is something I have talked about many times, as over the long run with brushed sides, you don't have to worry about smudges or scratches as much. But that's just my personal preference. And I fully understand here why Wise did what they did, and especially with this very sleek curvy case shape. It not only gives the watch a slimmer profile, but it also looks fantastic. By default, every diver could be considered a tool watch, as it's kind of the whole point behind them. But tool is not something I think of when I see this. Just from this case alone, you can tell they were going for an eye-catching dressy diver, and that's even before you get to the dial. Flipping the watch over, you can see the exhibition case back. It's fairly typical as case backs go with all the particulars. Generally, the Miyota 9015 is a fairly plain looking movement, but Wise added a custom rotor here, which makes it a little bit more interesting. Back to the front and at the right, we have a signed screw down crown. 
just like the case, it's polished to the nines. And overall, it is a good size. It's not so big that it ever distracts, but big enough that it's easy to use. This leads us to the bezel. Most of the colorways of the 88 have a black bezel, but this is the only one to have this brown coffee or root beer colored ceramic insert, which always looks great paired with a leather strap, as well as adds a more interesting border with the silver chapter ring below, which is another unique feature of this colorway, as the other chapter rings appear to be black. The action of the bezel itself is great. It's 120 click, unidirectional, no back play, and has a great clicky action. The only trick is that it is a little stiff to turn, which according to Wise was done on purpose to make sure it never gets turned accidentally. But that stiffness combined with the thin and slender nature of the bezel does make it a little bit harder to get a good grip on when you want to turn it. Not so much that you can't turn it while wearing it, but enough that you do notice it compared to other watches. Which brings us to the dial. And with this specific colorway, the dial is a darker gray. And I think that adds just a touch of subtlety to the wavy pattern etched into it, which is probably not obvious, or you're not thinking of subtlety when you're seeing these macro shots. With these up close shots and the lighting, it almost looks like a circuit board. But when you get out to arm's length, it becomes much more subtle where only part of the texture comes through as you move the watch around. Moving to the outer edge, there's also that silver raised chapter ring. And this is something I've really come to appreciate with the watch, as it not only adds a very eye-catching border between the gray dial and the brown bezel, but it's also perfectly lined up with the outer curvature of the domed crystal. So the distortion just seems to amplify that chapter ring and causes it to really pop out at you. The handset is also a fairly unusual choice or at the very least the hour hand is, as it's basically a stick with a skeletonized base and then wings that are taped on in the middle. It's odd, but I think it works with the design. And the gold coloring of those hands really help them come out against the gray dial. Other than that, everything else is fairly standard for a modern diver. You have a minimal amount of text on the center of the dial, square and rectangular applied indices in a matching gold, and a cutout at the six for the date. It would be nice if the date wheel was color matched, but it never bothered me while wearing it. I always found myself too distracted with all the other elements to pay attention. I think this is one of those watches where if you zoom in and start to look at every individual component separately, it looks a bit odd, as there are a lot of really unusual elements here. Yet at the same time, when you start to zoom back and take the watch in as a whole, these odd components somehow seem to work with each other. Creating a watch that has a sense of familiarity, yet at the same time, it's unlike anything I've ever seen before. It's eye-catching, complex, and visually interesting, without being overly so. All while being highly functional, with all the elements that really matter coming through with a high contrast. And to top it all off, it's eye-catchingly gorgeous. Now, for some, the idea of a dressy diver is kind of a paradox. It's a contradiction in terms that makes no sense whatsoever. And typically, this is the same set of people who cringe when they see a dive watch on leather. I do understand where they're coming from, the idea that a watch should be used for its intended purpose, and that a dive watch was invented to be a pure tool watch for divers. But at the same time, that's not really reality, or at least reality today. Most dive watches never go diving, and a lot of them never even see water. People love divers and buy them because they are generally a great looking durable watch one they typically don't need to worry about and can wear in a variety of situations. These days, whether we like it or not, the dive watch is really the SUV of watches. And in that regard, a dressy diver makes perfect sense. And this is a great example of that. It's also potentially a perfect watch to take with you on holiday. Now, if you're going to a wedding and you're planning on wearing a tux, this may not be the right option. But other than that, it looked just as good out to a nice dinner as it would hanging out at the pool. Anyway, let's move on to the Loom, and in short, the Loom is amazing. If you happen to have caught my Three Kings of Loom video, this is the third King of Loom. It's one of the three best watches I've ever seen for Loom. So in short, this is one that's not going to disappoint, and it's one that's going to leave all your Seikos in the dust. Now, each colorway is going to have a slightly different Loom setup with this one having a mix of blue BGW9 on the dial and green light old radium on the bezel. My only critique is with this specific colorway. 
and that's that the light old radium loom on the bezel doesn't last quite as long as the BGW-9. But again, other colorways don't have that issue. Movement-wise, the 88 comes with a Miyota 9015. I've talked about the 9015 before, and generally I'm a fan of it. It gives you similar specs to the Swiss options at about half the cost. It's a great movement, with the only negative being that the rotor is a little louder than other options. With most watches, I barely notice the sound, and that's true here with the 88 as well. But I do know that some are more sensitive to this than others. Although one other potential issue is that at this price, this is kind of the upper end where I like to see that movement. As here you start to see a lot more alternatives with an ETA 2A24 or Sleeta SW200, which are generally more preferred just from a value standpoint, giving you the best bang for your buck, so to speak, even though performance is still going to be similar. With regard to the strap, the Wise actually comes with two, this brown classic looking leather version and a gray rubber strap. Both are quick release, both have really nice hardware, and both are straps I think you would enjoy wearing with the watch long term. Although between the two, I actually like the rubber strap better. I'm not 100% sold on the gray color, but as rubber straps go, this is a great one. It's extremely soft and pliable, which translates to a lot of comfort on the wrist. The leather strap is also good, at least once it's broken in. It's quite stiff at first, but overall I think it's one you'd want to keep with a watch. My one critique is that at this price, a better quality leather would be nice. Like, say something from Horween or a Shell Cordovan strap. Especially since you're not getting a bracelet. And that's a good segue to start talking about value. Currently, most of the 88 models are going for $599, with a few of them going for a little bit more. And this one, the 8820A, is going for $610. Although, Wise was quick to point out that if you sign up for their newsletter, they will send you a $20 discount code. Overall, I'd say $600 is pretty good for what you're getting here. Not coming with bracelet is perhaps the one sticking point. But at the same time, this isn't the only watch I've seen at $600 that didn't come with a bracelet. Supposedly, a 904L bracelet is coming, but that's all I really know about it. Beyond that, though, the quality of what you're getting here is amazing. It's a watch that's truly impressed me in every aspect it could, which isn't something that I can say about most watches I've seen in this price range. There's usually some compromise or something about it that I think is lacking. But here, most of my critiques are about personal preferences and not quality. And heck, even the box it came in is highly impressive, and I usually don't care or even talk about the packaging. Wise watches set out to create a gorgeous, eye-catching, do-anything diver, and that's exactly what they wound up with. So bottom line, I like it. I like it a lot. And if you're in the market for something in this price range that's capable with a bit of flash, I highly recommend the Wise Adamascus 88. I can say with full confidence that this is truly one of the best microbrand divers I've ever run across. If you're wearing a tux or a full suit, it might look a little bit off. But other than that, it's ready for just about anything. Now, as usual, let me know your thoughts on this one from Wise down below, as well as what are your thoughts on 904L Steel? Do you see it as a distinct upgrade, or is it just some sort of gimmick? And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help the channel. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time. See you next time.